Hello, my name is Professor Robert Murgis, and I am an intellectual property law professor at the University of California in Berkeley in the US. I will follow tradition and present my name card to you now. I'm very glad to greet you all. I'm recording this message uh, as part of the public event to celebrate the Chinese translation of one of my books called Justifying Intellectual Property. And I am very pleased that this book will now reach a broad audience of Chinese speakers. And for that, I have uh, many thanks for the chief or head translator is Professor Jin Haijun from Renmin University Law School. Professor Jin worked for several years with a team of others, uh, all of whom worked very hard to translate uh, what is not an easy book, to translate a difficult book into Chinese so that it could be available to a bigger audience. And I am very grateful for that. <clears throat> so I have uh, written a number of books, and most of them uh, are aimed at students who are learning the field of intellectual property. I've written a case book on intellectual property and also a case book on patent law. I've written many articles on uh, intellectual property law for law journals and academic publications. But this book <clears throat> that we are celebrating today is a little bit, bit different. This is a book that I wrote to try to explain the philosophical basis or the philosophy behind uh, intellectual property rights. So it represents an attempt to explain why we have IP rights and to justify them, to defend them on the basis of uh, philosophical principles. <clears throat> the reason I'm very happy about the Chinese translation is that I have had many Chinese students here at Berkeley over the last 25 years. Many students come and study for a one-year LLM degree. Many of these students have returned to practice in China, and I have kept in touch with many of them over the years. And through them, I became interested in the progress and development of intellectual property law in China. And as many of you know, the changes and the growth in that field in China in the last uh, 10, 15, even 20 years had been really remarkable. And so I think it's a good time to introduce a book into the Chinese market that will talk about the origins and the basis of intellectual property rights. Even today, when we have a difficult trade conflict between the US and China, intellectual property is still important, maybe in some ways more important because to protect investment in a uh, economy where international trade is subject to tariffs and other restrictions, uh, intellectual property is one of the remaining instruments, which is by treaty and by national law available to people from all over the world. So there, there's a strong anti-discrimination principle in intellectual property law around the world. And that I think is helpful in a period of uh, trade conflict. Um, <clears throat> let me say a word about the book. So this book is an attempt to defend or justify intellectual property rights. And to do that, I use some Western philosophers who are well known. I draw on the work of uh, property theory, John Locke, of ethical theory, uh, Immanuel Kant, and also on the theory of fair distribution. And that work is from Professor John Rawls, philosopher from Harvard. 
And in the course of the book, I try to defend intellectual property using these philosophical principles. Then I talk about some major themes in intellectual property that go through and go beyond individual cases or individual statutes. These are general principles. And then I talk about some specific issues, including the important topic of how can we defend intellectual property, which is designed to help individual writers and inventors. When most intellectual property is owned by big corporations, how do we explain and justify the practical effect of intellectual property, which is created by individual people and often owned by big organizations. So this is just a preview of some of the issues in the book. I hope you like it. I have sent along some signed bookmarks for those of you who are interested in buying a copy of the book. Sorry I can't be there in person to sign your book myself, but this bookmark will at least be a token of my thanks for purchasing the book and for having an interest in our field of intellectual property law. So thank you very much. And thanks also to the hosts of this event, including especially my former student from the law firm of Broad and Bright, uh, Ms. Liu Fang. Uh, Fang has taken a lot of effort along with others to coordinate this event. So thank you all very much. And I hope to see you all on my next trip to China. Thank you, bye.